Hello everybody, long time no talk. I've been busy with school stuff. I'm working on my PhD in US security policy. I'll be moving to Paris, France here pretty soon to study kind of like Western security policy at large as a part of this master's program. But anyway, today I wanted to talk about whether or not Biden's going to leave Afghanistan because again, that's like literally my area of study. Sources in the description box if this is YouTube or Rockfin if this is television. Uh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> that's just, that's the way the cookie crumbles. So anyway, things I'm going to talk about right now, I'm going to give you guys Biden's statement. I'm going to tell you the military budget up to this point, what the military has already stated in terms of what their mission in the near future is going to be, uh, where donations are coming from, who's getting specific types of donations, what did the U.S. foreign policy goal or what did Biden state the U.S. foreign policy goal would be up to this point? And then does Afghanistan fit into that? So on and so forth. Okay. So let's jump into what Biden had to say up to this point. This is according to the Washington Post, by the way. So I'm going to go ahead and quote this bad boy. If you guys are listening and not seeing the screen, I'm showing the source. But anyway, here we go. President Biden will withdraw all American troops from Afghanistan over the coming months, U.S. officials said, completing the military exit by the 20th anniversary of September 11, 2001 attacks that drew the United States into its longest war. The rest of the article pretty much just goes into that, like, oh, this is a little bit more context in terms of what Biden's talking about, how long have we been into the war in Afghanistan, so on and so forth. But you get the point, right? Biden says we're going to make a quote-unquote complete withdrawal from Afghanistan. Okay, now here's where it gets a little juicy. The story gets a little bit more interesting, a little bit more uh, conflicts, contradictions, cooperations, so on and so forth. So the Military Times, they came out with an article approximately, actually, yeah, it's almost exactly a year ago, give or take uh, 11 days. I did a video a long time ago. I'll let you guys look at that video. It's in the description box if you want to watch it. But essentially, the U.S. military had already planned to leave Afghanistan and to actually go to the Indo-Pacific region to challenge China, Russia, and I guess inadvertently India, but they don't really have too much of an issue with India. Now, I know some of you, I know it, some of you out there is like, where the holy hell is the Indo-Pacific region? Essentially, that's kind of the area on the near the ocean with China, Russia, and India, kind of like I had just described. So the U.S. wants to go and find a way to occupy that area to challenge these types of countries because clearly trying to attack Russia from the east and the west or at least have some sort of physical intimidation tactics, that's the U.S.'s best idea about maintaining peace. But let me, let me just give you guys some context in terms of the magnitude of this type of operation because it's not like a... One of those like, oh my God, yeah, look at that. Biden's getting us out of these like conflicts. Good for Biden. Bruh, you just wait. You just wait. So if, you, if you stay with me in this video, just follow me on this. So if we go to the Indo-Pacific region, we will literally be dealing with 15 of the 30s, 30 world's largest mega cities. I hope to God I just made sense. Bear with me. Out of the top 30 mega cities, we'll be dealing with 15. That's what I'm trying to say. On top of that, out of the 15... Uh, most prominent U.S. trading partners, the ones who affect us the most, we'll be dealing with seven of them in just this area. Another scary statistic is if we have some sort of a military engagement, we will be dealing with 61% of the world's population. Right. This kind of makes Afghanistan look like a walk in the park in a way. I I don't, uh, you know, I'm going to withhold my, my opinion. Moving forward, the military budget had increased. From $705.4 billion in 2021 to the 2022 budget is going to be $715 billion. So we increased the budget by approximately $10 billion. Now you have to wonder if we're going to get out of Afghanistan, which is in theory going to bring our troops home, which is what is uh, referenced in a passive aggressive kind of weird roundabout way. Why would we need an extra $10 billion unless we are going to engage in a larger mission, correct? Okay, got it. So let's go to interests. One of the things that Biden had recently said in his speech to the American people is that combating China is going to be one of U.S.'s greatest missions of the 21st century. Would you like to know who just entered Afghanistan? China. So the contradiction that we're dealing with is that everything I said up to this point implies that the U.S. is going to get out of Afghanistan. However, this information directly contradicts that. 
And it says, well, hold on a second. If China's here, why would we leave? Well, again, follow me on this rabbit hole. I'm going to take us through. So the idea here is that we're going to, quote unquote, have to combat Chinese influence. Okay. How many contractors are in Afghanistan right now? And like, what is their role inside of Afghanistan? So there are 24,000 contractors inside of Afghanistan. 5,000 are combat contractors. 24,000. There's 13,000 American troops there for perspective. Okay. In terms of endorsements, God, this is, this part's frustrating. In terms of endorsements, Biden received over $3 million in endorsements from contracting companies. Now, if he's trying to get out of Afghanistan, why would they start to endorse him? Because that's not something that they would directly approve of. One of the individuals who's most prominent in the contracting industry, his name is uh, Eric Fanning, F-A-N-N-I-N-G. I think that's how you say his name. He is the Aerospace Industry Association's president which is just a bunch of fancy jargon of saying there's a group of people who are the top contractors in the world. He represents them, and he just endorsed President Biden during the election as well. Now, I'm going to go ahead and throw one more statistic out at you guys. So in 2019, the Pentagon spent $370 billion, which is half of the defense spending budget on contractors. So what I'm trying to say is if, if we're trying to figure out how deep we are in Afghanistan, you know, whether it be like the first knuckle deep, second, or we like a hand deep, we're an elbow deep up into this bad boy. Okay. That's how deep we are. Let's keep going. Here's what I think is going to happen. I think that we're going to leave Afghanistan. I think we're going to leave contractors there. And we're going to go into the Indo-Pacific region to challenge China specifically as like the primary uh, mission. And then I think after that, we're going to go and challenge Russia as well. The reason why I think these things is literally because of the fact that we don't want China to continue to, uh, impose itself quote unquote into Afghanistan. So I think that we're going to maintain a contracting presence, move troops to the Indo-Pacific region, and we may or may not in increase troop levels in those areas as well. So fun fact also about the United States is we never actually leave countries where we consider, just as a gen general statement, we never actually leave the countries that we consider to be crucial towards U.S. security. We have 800 bases in 80 countries. We might close a base, but we will never leave that country. I think this is one of those situations. I think we're going to leave Afghanistan, quote unquote, but there's going to be contractors that are going to stay. And we're going to reorient our thoughts to a long term plan against China, which I think is going to be abysmally terrible. Thank you.